meeting to order. Would you please rise and join us whenever you wish to? So know that you can come back at any time. We, we, we will miss you all. We thank you for your years of service on behalf of the Wayne Central School District. And so, board, if you kind of want to help us with this, with celebrating, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Okay. Should I do both? Mm -hmm. okay. So the first um, retiree we'd like to recognize is Barbara Brock. She was an art teacher at Ontario Elementary and was 15 years of service. Some of her extracurricular activities are too numerous to count, but some are the character ed committee at OE. The instructions come up here if you would. Thank you so much for all you've done for those little kids at Ontario Primary. Thank you. Thank you. And our next retiree, it's my pleasure also to present Rita Prideau, um, Certificate of Retirement for 17 years. Rita began her long career at Ontario Primary when her daughters were in school there. She volunteered and then began subbing. Cindy Van Hover, I said it right, asked her if she wanted to work as an aide. Rita accepted and OP was always a better place because of the work and dedication Rita gave to the children, their parents, and the teachers. She worked in many classroom settings, namely working with children with special needs. She instinctively knew how not to get into the conflict cycle with children. She was masterful at saying the right thing and doing the right thing at the right time. Teachers loved working with Rita. If Rita worked in your classroom, your classroom organization was never the same. Rita was at work early and left late daily. Rita made a difference in the lives of children. I can say that personally as well, so thank you so much. Thank you, Rita, for your many gifts you gave to Wayne Central. We are a better place because of you. Congratulations on your time. We have a number of retirees who enjoying retirement, were unable to attend this board meeting tonight. Daniel Cooner retired as a bus driver at, after 10 years of service. His wife, Patricia Cooner, retired as a bus driver after 20 years of service. Richard Massey retired as a, as a middle school counselor after 20 years of service. Anna McGrath retired as a high school science teacher after nine years of, of service. Diana Persick retired as the high school nurse after four years of service, and Rebecca Krauss retired after 19 years of, of experience as OE special ed teacher. We will miss all of those people as part of the Wayne Central family. So best, best luck and best wishes to all those folks on their retirement. Thank you. We do have a cake. We will take a short recess so that uh, we can enjoy the cake and celebrate this retirement time with our retirees. So at this point, let's take a short recess. Okay. Extremely hard to pull this together. I mean, she's just brilliant. I mean, she's a nice job, very nice job, Amy. Uh, and what you'll see in the report this year, board, this is a draft for you to look at. Uh, you know, we have really spent a lot of time uh, finding information and talking to you about what's actually occurred in the schools and in each of the departments. Uh, last year's report, we had a lot of data. We put the data in there, but we really wanted to make sure that it was explained so that the community would know uh, what are some of the areas uh, that we really improved on and areas that we continue to need to, to work on, basically. So this is a draft for you, and again, it covers every department, every school, um, and uh, what we plan to do, if, if all set, we, we're going to get that piece it out for the community and we'll put it on our website. We'll put it out uh, to folks so that people can see uh, what we accomplished throughout the last school year. Okay. Any questions about the annual report? Just on the, the fast facts, is this just from last year? Or this is last year's oh. piece, yes. That's from, from last school year. Yeah, so yeah we, but the leadership team is current. Yes, we put who's, who's on there now. Uh, we can certainly list who was on the leadership team from last year. Yes. Well, I'm just wondering if Maybe you should put the, sure. the 14, 15, 16 school board. I don't know. If you it's have 14, 15 school board. And then you have 15, 16 leadership. I don't know. We can do that. that that's an go, fix. I don't know. Yeah, we can I mean, that. that just, it's sure. just kind of, if somebody was to look at it and say, well, wait, is this this year or last year? Well, we, we will make sure we note that we make the changes. I right. that. No problem. 
problem. It should be continuity. I, I agree, actually. Okay. I don't like to publicly agree with Carla, but I do agree. <laughs> 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 I second that. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Board, if you'd like, if you want to take a look at that and send us any other additions that you have within the week, then by next week we can get that rolled out to the community, okay? So if you see anything else you'd like to um, share, again, as I said, this is a draft. Let us know, and we'll, we'll get it out before we put out the full publication. All right. Um, APPR, just want to share and just bring you up to speed with that. So the state, as you know, uh, last year changed the rules around APPR, and they said that we have to have a new APPR piece in place around observation and outcomes of attempts. Uh, and, and just those of you who may not be aware, that's a piece that we have has recently mentioned that, you know, if you can't get it resolved, uh, the date to turn it in is October 1st, if I remember correctly, Joe. And if it's not done by October 1st, um, then you have to seek a waiver to, to get more time to work on that. Most districts are seeking waivers <laughs> because it is a piece you need to be careful with and work through. Uh, we are one who I think will definitely seek a waiver. There are two waiver cycles, so there's one in, in October, which will give you three more months, and there's another window around November, which will give you a couple more months, uh, and February, rather, excuse me, and I put you some information there in front on your table, an article about it for you to read. We will definitely be seeking the waiver, I would say, in October. Um, at this time, it looks like, you know, we're certainly having good conversation with WTA and with regard to the administrative group. Uh, looks like we're making progress uh, and having structure, just to kind of give the board some feedback as to where we're at. So, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. May this be some of that. No so, I'm so I won't take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just want to have a conversation with you guys tonight about special education and. As Dr. Calvin indicated, I'll be talking about three different areas. The first area is taking a look at special education and the continuum of services that we provide here at Wayne. Also taking a look at your classification rate at Wayne Central and really talking a little bit about what services we provide with inside the district um, and what programs or placements outside the district. I first want to talk to you guys a little bit about the special education continuum of services. The most important thing to remember when we look at providing services for our students with disability is taking a look at the least restricted environment. You may know that as the LRE, um, and that's being able to provide the services for our students within the general ed setting. So they're receiving their primary instruction um, by the general ed teacher. Mr. LaRouche, when he used to be the um, building principal at um, continuum of services um, that we're talking about the least are at start at kindergarten and go all the way up to um, 12th grade. So the same services are offered to them in elementary, middle school, and high school. Okay. Um, so the next, um, so Lois may also have a uh, student who is in um, Jason's class is receiving that primary instruction but still is really struggling with reading support. So Lois would provide what we call as a resource room and what that is is that she'll be pulling out the child to provide supplementary supports. So it supports in addition to the regular curriculum that they're receiving. She is certified in LLI which is level literacy instruction and she's pulling that child out to receive that supplementary support. Um, within the general ed, still that there's related services, we have OT, PT, and speech also providing those supports. And we offer um, three different levels of special class. You might have heard, or it might be called self-contained classrooms. Um, our first is our 15 one-to-one, -one, which means that we have 15, st 15 students, up to 15. Doesn't necessarily mean that we have 15 in every class. Um, one special education teacher and um, that, they, that they need and to be able to whether they um, receive the strategies they need to be successful and no longer need the okay. special education supports. So that's our ultimate goal. And that does happen. There, there is our students that are declassified. We're going to start off with Free Will. Free Will has 18 students classified. Um, their classification rate is 6.5. If you take a look at those numbers, um, their, their numbers are pretty low per grade, you know, looking at first grade only two students, um, up to fifth grade that have six students. So they do have a lower number um, of students receiving services. And Michelle, these are kids with 
IEPs? These or? are yep. These are students with IEPs only. Only yep. Okay. Students with disabilities. If you notice here in kindergarten, um, when I talked earlier, I talked about um, really making sure we provide some response to intervention prior to classifying a student. Um, this is our you know we're a month into school and you probably may look at that number and say how do we already have five kids classified in kindergarten? Um, and those five students were receiving um, early intervention services as preschoolers. These groups, do we have um, an adaptive for program for phys ed or not? Yeah, we have specially de designed programs for, for the students um, that they, they do have um, some of our students support specialist and then if it gets to the point that with all of those intervention you might see a little growth but not enough, we then look at the, the top tier which is special ed. I think that's that's the that's the question is once you've tried A, B, and C, and we said and, and the district has collectively said, okay, we've tried these steps and they haven't worked. Now we need to actually classify the students. Um. I mean, I, I don't know if how often is even a fair question. I mean, but. There's, it, a lot it does. Of, there's a lot of legwork that's done prior to the meeting, so it, it just is not coming into the meeting and... Um, Making a 10-minute decision. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's looking at all the information and saying, you know, did we provide enough um, response to intervention? Or, you know, did, you, did we work only a week on... Our kids who are classified are doing on the Common Core mm -hmm. test and on the Regents exams. Mm -hmm. And in the annual report, we saw some statistics on how many of our students are going to four-year colleges, two-year mm -hmm. colleges, um, the military and employment. Do we have that broken out for our CSE graduates as well? Opted out, who falls in a four, and mm -hmm. all of that, so I have that as well. Since I, since I know Michelle loves to present, what we'll do is we'll have her come back. <laughs> uh, so it's not a one-time thing. We'll have her come back. Are you sure? Uh, and here at Sherry Little Distance with the entire board. Is that can, good? Yeah, can I just say that um, this was, this, I don't have the advantage of having kids Mm -hmm. that have gone through this process. I don't work in a district, so I don't have exposure. This was fantastic. I really appreciate you uh, putting this together because I've um, you, you even asked Carrie a couple questions, and this was wonderful. This was really good for me. I, I really appreciate your time, and I certainly hope you know that I was asking questions to be to gain more information. Yeah, I certainly don't want you to think I was trying to grill you. No, so, absolutely. Three years ago, you didn't know CSE for my. I couldn't spell CSE. But what is the. Yeah, Jen, that is in the. Uh, in the book. 12,000 and something. Yeah, 12,000 and something. Carl, I'm not sure what it is for the special ed. They don't really. Right? And when you, like you said, there's a double edged sword. So, a good thing is that we're doing a really good job with kids who are with disabilities. And so, parents um, hear about that and they talk. Um, at, at least from some parents' perspectives, they, they think that we're doing a good job. And so when parents hear that, you end up getting people who say, well, it worked out great here, you know, why don't you bring your kid? So you get kids. I mean, 20 kids is a lot of kids to get in. Just kind of understand why, why that extra fluff is needed to be able to support all students who might come. 20 is a lot for yeah. Wayne and one. Excluding kindergarten math is, so 1 to 12. Mm -hmm. How many new students did we have this year? I would need to get that number to find out for okay. you. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Because I, I just would like out. to know how many Sorry. new applied, for, you know, are in the census, right. and mm -hmm. how many of that new are the 20. The, what is that percentage? We can find that number out for, for the board from members and Mr. share that. Switzer or something? We'll do that, yeah. Okay. I think my son out. said in just seventh grade alone that there was 10 new students came right at the beginning of the year. And sometimes you don't know till the school year starts because oh, people wait till the last minute to move or to sign up their kids and we went on vacation and then and so and that's kind of what happened. Okay. All right, so we're going to swi switch gears. Thank you, Michelle. We'll make sure we bring you back. Um, and uh, we're going to switch gears. I wanted to just share with you a little bit about our human resources uh, uh, area and talk to you a little bit about. Um, staffing trends. So, um, we should do that for a little well, we had to add another uh, special education teacher. Um, so, in a year, we went from 39 to 40 uh, special education teachers, and and it's, it really has been a pleasure all these years working with Michelle because um, the building principals work in concert with. Um, with, with Michelle and even if a child is classified we work very difficult uh, hard making sure that we get them back in the general education setting as soon as possible so even if they go to a smaller self-contained classroom we work 
to get them out the minute they get in. So um, the HR, some of the things that are happening in HR right now, um, Bob Miller, who's replaced some of the cornerstones in this district, um, is retiring and we are uh, actively searching right now. Um, that is a civil service uh, position, Director of Facilities 2. Um, in fact, it canvasses the whole state. Uh, so you might get applicants from Long Island and, and all over the place. So that's something that's it's really on our, on our plates right now. Um, it, our, our goal, and the goal, is to have somebody um, to you in November so we can have somebody start in December and have some overlap with Bob. That, that, that truly is the goal. So um, we have a closing date of next week. We have to see how many people are applying and, and we'll go from there. So we'll, you'll, be, you'll be getting some of those things soon. Uh, right now we're updating some of the evaluative tools that we're using in the district. Uh, uh, for instance, nurses, um, what we use for their evaluation tool hasn't been touched since about 1999 um, and do really doesn't reflect what they do, so it's hard to give them really good feedback. So we're looking at different tools and we're going to take each one as it comes and, and take a look at that. Um, so right now it's nurses, transportation. Uh, Tony Casson has just done the coaches. We're looking at that. Um, and we're also working with the WTA. We're going to be working and the, the stipend is the last thing that they uh, need to do to really close that contract. So we've already started talks with that and we're getting our committees together and getting some dates. So that's kind of exciting. So we do have people talking about medical care, Obamacare, Cadillac yes. plans. Medical is is expensive, and it can, as you you know now you get employees in. It used to be if they were part time employees or they worked so many hours, you didn't have to offer health care. But with the changes politically, you have to offer this. So that's why you see that number constantly climbing each year, uh, mm -hmm. and it will continue to climb unless something changes drastically politically. Just so the board again understands as we start to when we get to budgeting this year, we start to talk about benefits and, and you know. That's almost a million buck, bucks of an increase uh, in just one year. And it will mm -hmm. probably go up. Just want to make sure that people understand that. Bob, the benefit slide is the one that really, that is, I mean, that's on, you know, everybody comes and takes the benefits. There's, you know, we have 48 bus drivers. Every one of them uses us for their health insurance. Yes. Maintenance, well, all you. but two. Except for the ones that are over 65, don't they? They don't. They don't have Medicare, aren't they? A lot. A lot of people um, don't. The I'm not sure how many people are uh, working here that are over 65. I. I really don't know. I could look. Higher than you think. But then, we only pay. Would we only pay for the? As we've brought in the new Obamacare, right? You're going to see prices go up because. People now, have, by law, you have to offer them health insurance when you didn't have to offer to them before. Mm -hmm. And there's been changes too with, you know, parents now, you know, your kids can be on your plan up until what, 26, I think right. it is? Yeah. So you're going to see those costs continue to climb, and there's nothing we can do. Insurance available on your own, you're no longer no. eligible for that no. policy? No. 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 It depends on the policy. Okay. It depends on, I, I think it depends on, on, on some of those policies, too. And in New York State, if the child lived at home, they were always covered up to 25. If they were a student. And if they were to, yeah, but if they were living at home. If you provided one. Mm -hmm. so if you, uh, right. Now, this 26, your child can be married and still be covered yeah, until sure. they're 26. We just went through the yep. advice on yep. yeah. Different policies, it's... So it's expensive. it is. It is a very costly okay. endeavor. But Anything else? No, but you can have your picture on the front, Robert. You have mine right here. <laughs> <laughs> With two campers on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay, board. So the last piece here that we have under the superintendent's report is just one bit of information from Greg concerning a budget transfer. Greg, wanted to share a little bit about that? Yes. Um, in your packet tonight, we're asking you to approve a budget transfer for the maintenance department. We are replacing the cabling and the support systems for the baskets in the uh, older gymnasium, and we budgeted under supply, but we're also going to replace the way that um, in the past. We used a drill to be able to raise and lower those, and we're going to a new electronic system um, because they made some changes to that. 
And so based on that, we're having the people we're buying it from install it. So it changes it from a supply to a contractual one. Does it over 10,000, we need board approval to be able to do that. So we ask for your approval to um, move that money so we can get that done. How old are the ones in there now? Do the drill because, you know, a lot of times it actually causes employee injury because it can really wrench things. Um, Which building is that being done in? High, high school. The old gym. still have those in the middle school. Remember, uh, internal control risk assessment and control cycle out of food service. Our next meeting is October 15th at 530 here in this room. And we will meet with uh, Jim Buckham from EFP Rotenberg to go over the two draft audits. Policy committee. Uh, we had our first meeting this evening. Our next one is October 8th in uh, the high school room 5B. And tonight we went over the uh, charge of the policy committee, the procedures of what we do and how we do it, and how we will be doing it this year. And we also went over um, the policies that we'll be reviewing over the course of the next year. Okay. Are there any, any other committee reports? If not, then let's turn to board president comments. First, on behalf of the Board of Education and Wayne Central School District, I'd like to extend condolences to the family of Walt Hedgepath. Uh, Walt was a longtime social studies teacher in our middle school who recently passed away. Um, Walt was here during the 70s and the 80s, for those of you who go back that far. Uh, next thing is, uh, next meeting, I will not be present. Tim will be in charge. I will be in Utah, but I will listen in to the meeting and enjoy Tim running the meeting. <laughs> Lastly, uh, Tim and I had an opportunity uh, to attend the New York State School Board's uh, leadership training program uh, last weekend in Rochester. It was a very interesting meeting. Um, some of you know what made it particularly interesting. <laughs> um, but. Um, but about half of the meeting in the afternoon was devoted to, to, the, um, to the research that's coming out that, that says that school board effectiveness has have a direct result 